Some recent development, if you guys haven't heard, Everlast is getting ready to open up a brick and mortar school here in Kansas City that myself and Bob Moffat are going to, to run. And in preparation for that, we want to start showing you some uh, like higher level techniques or higher end techniques, um, more advanced stuff that we're going to be covering at the school to help, help you further your skill set. And so one of those things is going to be out of position welding which is going to lead into some like D17.1 like aerospace classes, uh, which is what I specialize in is D17.1. Uh, we're going to go over some aluminum, eighth inch, 6061 vertical. And in following videos, we're going to do overhead and horizontal. But today we're going to show you a couple tricks to running out of position aluminum vertical runs. So let's get the machine set up and we'll make some runs. All right, so today we're running our Typhoon 230. Running pretty standard settings. Uh, we're gonna go 171 amps, 161 hertz at 35% balance. I'm running a number seven edge gas lens at about 22 to 24 CFH of pure argon. All right, so we start this first run and the main thing I see with people running vertical is a bad torch angle where they're lean to one side of the plate because when you're running vertical, it's harder to see your torch angle whereas when you're flat, You've got a better view, you're more comfortable, and running vertical, that's just not always the case. And so, someone leaning their torch over to one side of the plate is the most common mistake I see. And what it'll do is it'll lopside your penetration to one side of the plate. So you'll have penetration on the back side, but it'll be a lack of complete fusion on the joint because it'll be so biased to one plate. So on this first run, we were running a torch angle. While my hand was comfortable, my torch angle was bad, and I was leaned to this outside plate. And that's where all my penetration is on this run is on this plate over here and not actually in the joint. So on this next run, we're gonna fix our torch angle, run it right down the center, and running vertical, you do wanna push the torch up just a little bit more to get your proper gas coverage, but you wanna make sure that you're not leaned to one side of the plate because you're going to lopside, you're going to lopside your penetration. So after the second run, we'll go to the back side and you'll see the difference between this first run with bad angle and the second run with proper torch angle. So in the second run, I've changed the, uh, the angle of the neck on my torch just a little bit. I'm running the flex neck to make it a little bit easier to keep my torch centered directly over my joint and not biased angle-wise to either plate and running right up the center. And you can see in the arc shot, we've got a nice keyhole we're maintaining as we go up. And that's gonna really improve the penetration side to side on the back side of this joint. All right, so here we've popped the plate off. We get a little better view of the penetration. So our first run, when I was biased to this outside plate with my torch angle, you can see all my penetration, which I, I got good penetration, but it was all to this one plate. So down the center of the weld, we actually have a lack of fusion. Now, just correcting that torch angle, same amperage, same filler to rod technique. You can see we got really good penetration here, right down the center. Both plates are tied in nicely. This is what we want to look for. So you will notice this little lack of fusion right here. What that's from is this back weld actually stopped about right there. And so I started transitioning to a good torch angle to set up for this next weld. I didn't quite step back far enough to really sink that in. So that's also something to watch. If you do have to have a restart, especially on vertical, you wanna step back a little bit further than you normally would even running flat plate. What we're gonna to move to next is maintaining proper torch angle, but we're gonna change where we add the filler rod. So a lot of times I see people running vertical, they'll wanna add filler rod from the side of the puddle because it's a little bit easier to travel with your run. What we really want to do is focus on adding your filler rod in the front edge of that puddle. So that's what we're going to do in these next two runs. The first one's going to be proper torch angle, but feeding the filler rod from the side, almost hitting the side of the puddle. We're going to show the, the back side after we do a good run feeding from the top again, just to show you the comparison. All right, so we're running this, this next weld using good torch angle, but we're using a bad filler rod addition. So you can see on this run, we're adding filler rod to the side of the puddle. Now what's happening is you're actually pulling filler back out of the puddle and it's making these sharp little ridges on the tow line. So 
one side of the toe, the far side from my filler rod hand is actually still smooth, but where we're pulling that filler rod in and out of the puddle, we're getting these really sharp points, like jagged edges on our toe line. The first problem is that's gonna cause a stress riser in a joint. That's gonna be a weak spot. The other thing is you're adding filler rod to the plate and then hoping that it runs into the joint instead of adding filler rod directly into the joint. So you'll get a little bit less penetration at the same amperage with a good torch angle and adding the filler rod in the wrong spot because you're not actually putting it in the joint, you're putting it on the plate and letting it run over to the other plate. Using proper filler rod technique, you can see I'm adding filler rod right in the front of the, the, the weld, right on the toe, right into the joint, keeping a nice keyhole. And as we go along, the toes of the weld are super smooth. They're nice and tight in. We don't have those sharp, jagged edges. I can already tell my gap has closed up a little bit. Uh, I probably should have set the end of this plate a little bit wider than what I did. So that's gonna affect our penetration on the backside, but we're still gonna see a big difference between the first bad filler rod run and this next proper angle run. So now we're looking at the welds. Side by side, you can see that, that first run again using the kind of the side filler rod technique. We've got those real sharp edges on that toe of the weld and then up to our proper filler rod technique, you see nice smooth, nice hot toe. There's no stress risers there. So that's why filler rod angle, where you're putting it into the puddle is also extremely important. All right, so here was our, our run using the side filler rod technique. And this was actually the side of the plate where I was adding the filler rod to. So you can see all my penetration is really focused on this side. And then as we moved up, this is where my gap started really closing up on me up here. I think my tack was a little weak and it started sucking in. So had a hard time getting fusion there. I had to really ramp up my amperage, kind of overheated it through here and got a little excessive penetration. But again, it's even on both sides. And that's just from literally changing from filling our or putting our filler rod from the side to from the top properly. All right, so a lot of times when you're running like production work or you're on a bench, really vertical and overhead don't come into play. You'll get some horizontal, but vertical I see a lot more like doing repairs, like working on boats, um, larger things like that, or you know working on stuff inside of something that you can't remove. And so when you do come across some vertical, just remember to double check that you're having you know, your proper torch angle and that you're feeding your filler rod at the front edge of the puddle and not from the side. So next time you come across some vertical, think about those quick tips and hopefully you'll be able to run a better weld. I'm Jesse McCollum with Everlast Welders. Remember, weld mean, weld green.